This is the base I've been living in for almost 1000 days. And now it's finally time to upgrade and move to a much bigger base. So grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy these next 350 days. Before we get to building the new base however, there's two more things to do. Last episode I made a mob switch for the overworld and the nether. However, there are some mobs that are exceptions and one of them is the warden. So let's make a warden switch. The Shrieker is triggered every 10 seconds and attempts to spawn a Warden. However, because it's all spawn proof around it, the Warden fails to spawn and the Shrieker goes back on its 10 second cooldown. This way, Wardens are essentially disabled. Also, this contraption is in the spawn chunks, meaning I don't even need a chunk loader for this. And the second order of business is... Yep, we're almost on day 1000. So in order to celebrate this, I set up some fireworks around my starter base. And all I have to do is wait until the sun rises. This is the first big milestone in our journey towards greatness. Honestly, when I started this world, I didn't know the direction of this adventure. Right now, I am super excited to keep going with crazy projects and I feel like nothing can stop me. So let's hope this isn't the only milestone we'll manage to achieve. Here's to another 1000 days. Anyways, now let's finally start working on our new base. This is the location I chose for our new home. It's right above a stronghold, meaning we'll have an end portal right in our base. But first, we need to drain this entire area of water and lava in order for us to use TNT dupers to make a giant hole. So let's get started. And now we're done. As you can see, the water is completely gone and I have already gone ahead and built a TNT duper. There will be some water underground, but we'll take care of that once the dupers reveal that. Now you might ask, why is this area so big? Well, not necessarily because the base is that large, but simply because of the decoration around it. I mean, the entire build is still over 200,000 blocks, but you'll see soon enough what I'm gonna do with all this space. Anyways, now we can watch this thing destroy the world. Let's speed this up a bit and build a few more TNT dupers. While these are running, I'll have to remove water and lava on the go. And once this first layer of TNT dupers is done, I'll have to do that again a few blocks lower to make the hole deep enough. So without further ado, let's get started. And finally, it is done. Now there's enough space for the new base and we can start building. Hold on, not so fast, buddy. I think we're missing some resources there. All right, so let's just gather the resources in a cool montage.
And after a lot of hours of getting resources, crafting, getting more resources, and crafting some more, and then getting more. Okay, I think you get the idea. I even had overnight AFK sessions at the gold farm and the wither skeleton farm, so I can trade with piglins and get all the coal to smelt all the sand into glass. Also, I had to move the wither skeleton farm a couple of blocks, because when I built the gold farm back in episode 2, I accidentally built it too close to this farm. But yeah, now that is fixed as well. And on top of that, I built a really easy obsidian farm, because just trading with piglins was too slow. Although I needed a lot of blackstone and crying obsidian from piglins as well. Anyways, here are all the resources needed for this project and I'm ready to start building the new storage system. And without further ado, let's start this crazy build. Okay, wow, this looks insane. This was quite a challenge to build with all these rails facing the correct way, filling up all the spots with water and obviously managing my inventory. But at last, it is built. This is a multi-item sorter, meaning it can store multiple different items in a single category. In total, it can store almost 2 million items when they're not in shulker boxes. If I choose so, I can still put them in shulker boxes manually and make room for even more items. There are 103 different categories to organize all my items. I also reserved the slice for the the new tough blocks will get in the new update and also one for the new copper blocks as not all of them fit into a single category anymore. There are also still some unused categories for some future proofing as well. As for what items I want to sort, I have already gathered most of them. All that's left is the deep slate emerald ore, the netherite block, and suspicious gravel. And now, let's set up the filters and sort through all my items I currently have in my starter base while I finish building the new base. That was one hell of a grind to build. And all my items have been sorted as well. I went for an active meteor shower design with a huge crater around it. Now you can see why this area is so big. Anyways, before I give you a little tour, make sure to like and subscribe. Sorry for the shameless block. Anyways, what I meant to say is, let me get three villagers into the base first. Alright, now then, let me show you around. We can enter the base from the front or back where we end up in the storage. In the immediate vicinity, it is lit up to prevent mob spawning, although 99% of the time I have my mob switch turned on, so that wouldn't be a problem anyways. Down below is a slime launcher to get us back into the storage. Right across is our nether portal with a zombified piglin trap to keep them from wandering around our base. Over here is the enchanting setup with some storage for books and lapis, a grindstone and even an automatic anvil replacer. On the other side... You get it? Anyways, these are workstations I don't use too often, but are still useful to have. There's a loom, a jukebox and all our music discs, and a smithing table. Then here's a 32 furnace smelter with chests for input, output and fuel. Across is a brewing station, something I didn't have in my previous base. Well, I had a singular brewing stand there, but whenever I need the potions, I temporarily placed a few of them down to speed things up. So yeah, now we have three permanent ones that automatically refill bottles and blaze powder. Then at one end of the hallway is a map room. Two of those 
walls are most likely reserved for the overworld and nether perimeter that I'll be making. A little more on those later though. Currently, I don't really have an area I could map out for this wall. My starter base and the area around it is too small for this, and my new main base is about the only build around here, so it would look pretty empty as well. Maybe I will add stuff here in the future. Anyways, let me know what I could map out and put in here. Moving on to the other half. Here's our bed to set our spawn when we get back from the end. And as mentioned earlier, this base is built where a stronghold used to be. So now we have an end portal right in our base as well. Over here are the three villagers we can trade with to get our food. In addition, this also gives us a little bit of XP, which usually is enough to keep the elytra and most of our tools in good shape. Across is a bit of a different room. This is where you guys come in. There are three books that I'll be updating all the time. This first one is for your ideas in the comment section. So whenever you want to see a certain build or give me a challenge, I'll note these down here and check mark them when they are done. The second one is simply a comment I really appreciated or just wanted to share with you guys. This could also be a question for me or something that I can answer as well. So I'm thinking for every episode I'll write down a comment in this book here. And the last one is a logbook where I'll be keeping track of what I have done in each and every episode, how many days I've spent during each video, stuff like that. So yeah, make sure to comment your ideas down below. And at last, the achievement hall. This is where I keep track of big achievements or store some very special items. In the center is a dragon egg right on top of a netherite block, because why not? On the right hand side is our very first pickaxe. This is the actual pickaxe I used when I started playing in this world. You might notice I created this world on October 2nd, 2023, but uploaded my first video in December 2023. That is because I wanted to have some videos recorded ahead of time. That way I can upload them in a roughly two week rhythm, even though these videos take more than two weeks to make. Eventually this will catch up with me where I'm currently at. And at that point, I'd like to make different Minecraft videos than just the Harker series, although the Harker series will still be the main focus of the channel. But until then, there probably won't be much other content for now. In this barrel, I store all of my bows. This is pretty much the only item that doesn't have mending because I prefer infinity. And currently, I am on my third bow. And this is where I'll put an item representing me getting all the advancements. That is a video that's coming up somewhat soon. Then on the other side, there's an item frame for when I get every mob captured. These other two are for the overworld and nether perimeter. Basically, all my farms will be in those perimeters, making them the ultimate farming districts. And in the back is where I keep track of each 1000 day milestone I have reached. For every 1000 days, I'll put a nether star here reminding me of what I have achieved. And that's it for the base. I really hope you like it as much as I do. Anyways, now there's just one problem remaining. This is what it looks like when I leave the base through the nether, but that is what I'll be doing next time. So yeah, there's a little teaser for you. Well then, I hope you enjoyed the video as always, and I will see you in the next episode.